Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Thank and praise God for seeing you all today, being in your midst. Thank and praise God for this beautiful day we had and how he's blessed me to <laughs> overcome that, uh, uh, I guess, 72-hour bug. I thank God for that. He bless our bodies to recoup and recover. And prayer is always in order, especially in times like that. Praise God. Thank and praise God for blessing each and every one. And a friend of mine, lost his son, dear friend of mine, um, Brother Derek uh, Rose, lost his son. And um, i like y'all to keep him in prayer, those who watch this. Keep him in prayer because that's not an easy thing to lose a, a son or a child. So we never anticipate on us standing over our child. We always figure that they'll be standing over us. But, you know, God, God is God. Amen. So thank and praise God the weather has somewhat cooled. And uh, we're in, I'm truly grateful. And I pray all is well with everyone. You know, <clears throat> in light of the things that's going on, we should understand the forecast and the season in which we're living in. Um, we don't want to be inundated with... Um, uh, a religious mindset and not be <clears throat> attuned to what's going on around us you know the Bible said that we're to watch as well as pray that we're to be as wise as serpents and harmless as dove as a dove we need to understand where we at the Bible indicates on numerous occasions occasions that we in all I getting we should get an understanding not just to the things that pertain to God's Word but just the vicissitudes of life we should know the climate. God does not, us being his children, does not want us to be ignorant of what's going on around us. So we should know. We should, we should, we should, we should uh, uh, seek his wisdom and understanding so that we <clears throat> understand the time that we live in, so that we govern ourselves to cover. That's not to inundate ourselves with fear. Because everything that is going on, <clears throat> God has foretold us. So we should know how to position ourselves as it pertains to his word you know these things has to happen so if anybody should be alarmed it should not be us it should not be us if anybody should be alarmed about what's going on around us it should not be us we should be the last people that should be alarmed or or surprised about the climate of the day because he has told us in his word over and over again that the time that we're living in that this day will come and to our surprise, we are in the midst of it, and we are in the final hours. Um, no man know the uh, the day or the time, but we should be aware of the season, and we're in that season. We're in that season where the stage is set, and he can return. So we, being the children of light, need to herald out with a loud voice to all those around us to the people that we love and care about to repent for the kingdom of God is nigh upon us that we don't they don't have a lot of time they need to get their life in order with him so that they'll be ready for his return he's not coming back for people that's getting ready he coming back for people that has made themselves ready it's like going on a vacation you prepare for the vacation so he don't want you to be sitting around chilling and cooling like he you know, God know me, and I'm going to do my thing, and God understand. He ain't your homeboy like that, big dog. If you ain't in line with what he's saying, you be cut You be cut off. Cut off. Praise God. Uh, praise the Lord, uh, Auntie Claire. You be cut off. He ain't playing. You know, <clears throat> and my mind went back to when I was a teenager, and I was going to, I think it was McKenzie Driver's Education, and I had to catch the Davidson bus. So I go through the whole course and get down. He called it everybody who passed the course, you know. So I'm still sitting there. There's a couple other people sitting there, but I'm still sitting there. And I'm thinking, well, maybe my name is W going to be last. And he already said the criteria prior to the course that you have to have a minimum of these many points to pass. So in my own mind, in my own wisdom, I said, Surely, 
he'll let me pass. Being one point short. One point? One point? So I'm sitting there. Everybody done left. I'm still sitting there because I'm figuring, well, he going to just say, look, Jay, I'm going to let you go. And do. And what he did, is it blew my mind. He said, well, Mr. Williams, you don't have to sign up for the course. He said, since you didn't pass the course, I already have a slot for you. And he said, Bet, more or less, better luck next time. I was devastated. I went to the bus stop. Man, so somebody just knocked all the wind out of me. But it was a teachable moment for me. That was just a driver's education course. But we're talking about a, we're talking about the destination of our soul. Where are we going to spend eternity? We do not need to take that kind of chance with God. He has already laid out the criteria. Do not think that because you are who you are, that he going to wave, uh, go against his own word for you. Because of his sovereignship, because of who he is, he is God, and he cannot change if he said it is so. It's settled throughout eternity. So he doesn't just go back because he God. And because of you understand the nature of him, that's that's asinine for us to think that way. We have to bring ourselves into alignment with what he is saying so that we can fall into the 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 uh, uh the the into all of the favor that he's laid out or to, 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 to be a recipient of all of those things he made available to us. Now, he made it possible for us to, to get into a right standing with him. But if we choose not to do it, it's not him, it's us. It's not him, it's us. So we can't be uh, disgruntled with him because of our inconsistencies. He has given us everything we need to give him what he's asking for. Now that he's given us all the criteria, everything for the to be able to bring forth the fruit that he's looking for out of our lives. And that fruit should be reflective of that of his son. He being the first born of, first born of many brethren, that our objective is to mirror him. And if we think that we can do our own thing and tell everybody, God, know my heart and all this old foolishness, we going to bust hell wide open. I'm just going to be 100. Because there's some things we could play. You could, you could play around when you're cooking something on the grill. or you, you, you can laugh and joke with your buddy sitting and talking. We're talking about our souls. And because of the culture in which we live, we have a tendency to think that we have, um, we have the ability to, to, to our, our, say our peace, if you will. Listen, when you're dealing with a, monar a monarchy... That means the sovereignship of a king. Never forget that God is the king of kings. And everything in his kingdom is aligns itself up with his character, with his nature, with everything that pertains to him. We have to get in line with him. We, we you, you Look at the prayer, the Lord's prayer. Not my will be done. I mean, that let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will is preeminent. His will is has to manifest. It has to come to fruition. His will, not ours. And our objective is to line ourselves up with his will so that we will bring conform. We will submit to his will. And when we submit to his will, then the floodgates of all of the opportunities and things that he has entitled us, that he has engrafted us in through his son, we'll be entitled to him. But in, until we submit to that, until we yield ourselves over, until we surrender to that, then we'll find ourselves outside of that. Because he did everything to make it possible in his sovereignship, but his love for us, that he made it possible for us to be brought back in alignment with him. And because of that, we have an obligation to do what it is he wants us to do. And our objective is to mirror Jesus in our actions, in our attributes. See, we understand sanctification, being holy, uh, being sanctified, set apart, being holy, meaning that we are being conformed to the image and likeness of him for his use. And and what that is saying, in essence, is that we have aligned ourselves, meaning our mind, our heart, we've aligned ourselves with, with the mindset and with the governance of his kingdom. So we're saying the things that he say. We do the things that he has mandated in his word. So we don't govern ourselves in accordance to 
the the uh, the, the, the the cares of this world. We don't govern ourselves to the governorship of this world. So we don't pattern our life after the world, but we pattern our life after the kingdom which He has set forth through His Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus. This is what we have to do. When we do that, then we become holy. Because when you align yourself up with the things that causes us to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh, it's going to make you holy because it's going to set you apart. Because the world is going on the cadence to the work, to the flesh. So whatever their desire is, whatever they feel they're big enough to do in the sight of God, then they're going to do it. And it's going to be because of how they feel and what they think and what they whatever. But we, we bring ourselves under, to sub, under submission to his spirit and allow his word to, 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 to determine how we're to move forward. So we, we're not going to be like the world when we do that because the world is not doing that. That's what's going to set us apart. When you look at the totality of Israel, they were governed by God and his mandates and his words and the things that he had had laid out for them how they to how they to live their lives day to day that was a foreshadow but here we are we have been those who have been born into the kingdom we have been born into the kingdom of God and because we're born to the kingdom of God we too have to allow ourselves to be governed by his word and allow his spirit of being governed by his spirit and being I mean being governed by his word and being led by his spirit we have to be governed by his his uh, <clears throat> word and being led by his spirit this sets us apart from the world this is what makes us a peculiar people because we're not we're not marching to the same drum beat that the world here because our drum beat is from above so we're listening to that of the kingdom of light and they're marching to the kingdom of the drum beat to the kingdom of darkness. So this is what distinguishes us. Not the length of your dress or, 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 or you whatever else. You, that's, that's not to say that when you align yourself, that'll change. Because, I mean, you're not going to be uh, being led by the Spirit and you got a four-inch skirt on. I'm just, just keeping it 100. Because you're going to be concerned not only about what, what the, uh, you're going to be concerned about what the Lord think and how he feels. And you don't want to put yourself in a position that you will send a message that you're not sending. Because you're going to be concerned. You know, don't let your good, what you might feel to be good, to be evil spoken of. So you don't want to be approached in an unapproachable way that's not becoming to that of a child of the kingdom of light. So, it, But it starts here. When he changes our mindset, everything on the outside change. When we look at it from a religious perspective, we're just going to make you look like us on the outside and you could be still mean as a rattlesnake and doing everything under the sun and it's okay because you haven't missed a Sunday and you're there every Wednesday and you're there on Tuesday uh, Saints uh, Friday Saints meet and Tuesday choir practice so in the eyes of those around you you have conformed to that of the image of God because they see you at the church setting and all this other stuff don't let that stuff get you put in hell that don't mean, listen to me, people, God. God is looking for a transformation of heart. You can go to church every day, and if your heart has not been changed, you will bust hell wide open. It's a transformation of heart. We have It has to be a transfer of a citizenship, if you will, where you have been transferred out, transformed, transformed out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. That's, a, that's what the rebirth take place. We have to be born into the kingdom of God. And once we're born into the kingdom of God, then we begin, We be, instantly we become citizens. And as citizens, you have rights. But now you have to learn your rights, and now you have to learn how to conduct yourself in the kingdom of life. Because you can't bring all that stuff over there, over here. You just can't do that. But it's a process. So it ain't like you just... Once you're born, then they'll change. You know, a baby don't start talking when he come. He have to learn words. Then he learn words. Then he have to learn how to formulate the words. Then once he learned how to formulate the words, he in the process, he learned how to walk. He learned how to talk. And then the thought process, his, his thinking began to develop. But when you surround yourself with people that's like-minded, then you'll become more like them. What am I saying? When you come into the kingdom, 
of God. You got to surround yourself with people that really want what you want. Um, they they might they've been there longer. They want you got to want you want to surround yourself with people that want to be saved for real, not the people that know all of the buzz signs and the hallelujahs and all this other stuff, and they go through the formality, but ain't no change, ain't no transformation of heart. But you done fooled everybody on the show because trust this, check this, you ain't gonna fool God, so and and and, and you ain't gonna deceive yourself, and and, and he. <laughs> And he's going to judge you. And he's going to judge you righteously. So we need to make sure that we are lining ourselves up in, in our desires to do his will. And our desires to walk and talk as he would have us to. Because we're living in a crucial time. It's a crucial time. You know, our redemption has is nigh. I really believe in my heart of hearts that in our lifetime we are see the return of the Messiah. And when you look at how they're setting the stage, we're about to go into a cashless society. That's one mark from the beast. Where you have to buy, sell, and trade, you're going to have to have a mark or imprint. They're going to probably start with a card. We one step away. People, wake up. This is not this. Listen, Israel was going through the dress rehearsal for the coming of Messiah. They're going through all of the, 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 the feasts and all of this stuff. was It was all for a purpose. And they got caught up in the religiousness of it. So when it unfolded before them, those who were leaders, they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it because they became blind and their hearts were hardened. They was going through the formalities. They knew the words and the cadence, but it didn't penetrate their heart. Let us not be guilty of that today. Let us not be guilty of the same thing. History is so often repeated because we don't learn from the mistakes of others. We always, as a people, people always say, well, I, I'm not going to do it like that. I said that one time about my father years ago. He had something fall on him in the factory, and they had gave him a settlement, which was at that time it may have seemed to be like a lot of money. So I thought that, man, he should have opted to have a lifetime job, and blah, 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 blah. I said all that stuff, and I wouldn't, but you know what? I set myself up for judgment. Do you know when a situation happened to me, the same thing he did, I did. Because I didn't know no better, and apparently he didn't either. So I, I've learned not to be quick to judge the actions of people, a, a situation. So what are you saying, Gene? What I'm saying is this, that we want to make sure, we want to make sure that we get it right. We get it right. And how do we get it right? We need to establish that personal relationship with God. We need to allow that to take time and praise and worship, singing songs and med meditating on his precepts. Not just thinking about him when you're going to church on Wednesday or on Sunday, but when you wake up in the morning, because he didn't have to breathe a breath of life into you. When you open your eyes, as you go to your job, because you didn't have to have one. When you open the refrigerator, some people living on the street. When he bless you to put something on after you walk out the shower, some people don't have no way to wash up. They don't have no clothes to change into. When you begin to take for granted these little things that's around us, that these are things that he don't have to do, but he's still just. Because you got people that's living in the, in the bush that's serving him and they that dedicated their whole life to him. And they have nothing. And he has blessed us with everything. And we'll get upset because we wanted a blue car and they only had a, a brown one. We, we need to get our priorities in order. This is a trick of the enemy. Let us focus on those things that are important, people of God. Let us focus on things that's going to help transform us into the kingdom of light. That we need to begin, a, it's called, a, I call it a transference of affection. We need to begin to start putting our affections on things above. And not on just a nice car or a new suit. That's nothing wrong with having that. But we need to wear it like a loose garment. What do you mean, Brother Jay? I'm glad you asked. When you wear something like a loose garment, you can appreciate it. But if it was gone tomorrow, it'll be like it was never there. Because you know it's temporary. So you don't put something temporary in a permanent place in your life. I need to write that down. You don't need to take nothing that's temporary and put it in a permanent place in your life. Having a permanent relationship with a temporary thing, a car, a house, 
a job. It's temporary. The only thing that we're going to take from this, this kingdom, this life, into eternity is everything that we establish with Christ. Everything that we establish with God. If we don't allow ourselves to line up with him, if we're not saying what he's saying or doing what he say do, that's the only thing that we can take from here to eternity that we can put in the bank over there. And if we don't do nothing with that, we ain't going to have nothing over there. We got to change how we think. We need to start setting our affections on things above. Do not let the enemy deceive us in our thinking. Do not let the enemy deceive us in how we conduct ourselves. Because he is very masterful in what he does. And we are living in a day and age where people are so... Uh, the Bible said that they'll become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. You know, um, they... they they, they 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 have no patience with each other. Everybody's angry, and you got people that's concerned about a picture and how they look on a picture more than how they think in their heart, more than how they, they they treat the person next to them. You know, our priorities are distorted. And the enemy is very masterful at it. They are lovers of themselves. You got people that are looking in the mirror, taking pictures all day long, and 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 they want to make sure every line and every thread is in place. And, and and yet, they never think about how much time have I spent with God? What have I said or did to to further my relationship with Him? How much? What 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 can I have said or done to share this this love that He has imparted unto me to someone else? We 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 we, we lovers. We we got We are children of light. We can't allow the way the world do things. The way we're not supposed to govern ourselves like that. We drummed, we, 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 we marched to a different drum beat, people of God. So it's important for us to understand the purpose in which he's created us and the purpose in which we're to go forth and proclaim his truth. We have been granted the awesome privilege to be an extension of God's hands. If we are yield ourselves over to him, he can use us to advance his will. Praise God. And we have to submit ourselves to his will. We need him. He don't need us. Jesus said the very rock, if, if, if they wouldn't have cried, the very rocks would cry out. We serve a God that is worth praising. He's worthy of all praise, worthy of all honor. Holy is he from everlasting to everlasting. He's holy. And we need to understand that we, the privilege and honor that he's given us, who we were, we were strangers. We were aliens to him. We were alienated from him because of our sin issue. But he sent his son and he had bridged a gap of reconciliation and made it possible for not only us to be engrafted back in, but to be made a son, a heir, a heir. And when you look at this custom, uh, or the, the custom it was, that was a big thing to be an heir. He has made us an heir. Through Christ. And the thing is, is that we need to understand the purpose in which he created us and how he wants to use us in advancing his will on this planet. We need to understand who he made us to become because we make light of it. You know, everybody today is a Christian and, you know, you go, they can guide that you know, pretty much take your car or stick you up. He a Christian, you know, and, and, and uh, listen. The Bible said, know them by the fruit. If 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 it's not if it's on a plum, if it's on a on a grapevine, and it, and then it comes out of orange, then that's not the fruit that's supposed to come from that vine. It should be reflective of the vine that we connected to. Jesus is that vine. So what am I saying? I'm using that as an analogy as to the character, our conduct. It should be reflective of Him. They had a little thing saying WWJD, but we need to be we need to be doing what Jesus would do. We don't need to say it. We we need to be. It, it should be a part of our nature. It should be a part of our nature that's constantly evolving. We begin to if we continue to grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, we should become more and more like Him. A tree that's constantly growing, and the tree grows and grows and grows until it's no more. That's how we should be. We should constantly be coming into a better understanding, a better, a better understanding 
uh, in our walk with God and what it is that he's requiring of us and how we can conduct ourselves to bring glory and honor to his name. That should be a constant thing. It should be constant. And, and, and this here, praise God, this here is something that we should be working on continuously. This is a lifelong journey. It's a lifelong journey. So with that being said, I'm, <laughs> I don't mean to keep going straight, um, uh, but I'm gonna I'm 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 go and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna change. I'm gonna uh, just have a word of prayer, and I'm gonna just read um, the third chapter of Colossians, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna um, call it. Gracious Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that you watch over us, protect us, lead God, and direct us, help us, and keep us. Lord, we pray that you endeavor, that you that your will be done in our lives, Lord, that we endeavor to do that which is pleasing unto you. We pray that you have your way in our hearts and our minds. Lead, guide, and direct us. Bless us. Overshadow with the power of your love. Lord, we bind up every evil work of the enemy, Lord. Bless us that we might be used to and for your glory. Bless us to step out the compassion of ourselves. Allow your spirit to have its way. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I am just want to, I'm going to just go. This is Colossians 3. And um, I don't know if anybody watching, but I'm going to go through it anyway. It said, if ye, this is Colossians 3, third chapter of Colossians. And um, it says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where, <clears throat> where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, and not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. <clears throat> Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh to the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walk some time when ye lived in them. So let's go, we're going to go to, I'm just, um, he said here, first he's telling us where we our affection should be. So our focus should be, he said, set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. It's our life should be, Christ is our life. So we being dead with him, we rise in the newness of life with him. So our life is hid in him. So when he appeared, when, when, who is our life? Christ. When Christ appeared, who is our life? Appear, then ye shall also appear with him in glory. So this was an admonishment or encouragement to the believers. But he's also letting them know that while we are waiting on this process, we have a responsibility. That responsibility is to mortify, therefore, the members which are um, upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, uh, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is adultery. Uh, these are all attributes of the flesh. So when we look at fornication, that's dealing with all types of sexual sin. Um, uncleanliness um, is another uh, form of sin. Inordinate affection, which is unnatural affections. Um, an evil concupiscence. Concupis concupiscence is like a sensuality. Now, a concupiscence is, is consensual between a husband and a wife. But it says evil concupiscence. It, it is taking that sensuality and and distorting it uh, with doing all kind of stuff that's unseemly in the sight of God. So then it says that's what I say evil concupiscence. And then it says covetousness, which is when we uh, desire to have something that belongs to somebody else or desiring to be like somebody in the sense that we covet them or or, or almost a form of like worshiping. Um, is like a form of worship. It's like idolatry, idol, idol worshiping, and we have to be careful that we don't allow those things to take wit in our heart. But all of those things are attributes of our flesh. And he says, "For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience." So these are, are these attributes are possessing all the children of disobedience and the wrath of God, meaning that His judgment will come upon them. And then he says, "In the which." Ye also walk some time when ye lived in them. 
So he's saying that this used to be you, but now that you've been brought into the kingdom of light, this no longer is a, apply to you, but you're to, you're to keep yourself away from these things. So, and he says, but now he also put off all the all these, and he, he goes on to say, there's some more stuff that we got to take off. He says, anger, wrath, malice. Now, anger. Now, anger is can cause us to sin bear reference this here is anger then then anger is wrath so that that means that the anger comes and when the anger comes then wrath is you responding to the anger and then malice is the intent the um not the intent the um the severity that you respond in the anger all of this and then blasphemy um, doing those things that's 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 unholy or unseemly. Um, we pretending to be that which we're not. We 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 we, we um, this ungodly behavior, filthy communications out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with these deeds. So this is it's showing a transference of the heart because a lot of times people saying, "Well, God understand." Here you clearly see Paul is making reference to these things have to be done away with. This is a part of God's grace. He's given us the grace when he gave us his, given us his spirit. His spirit, when we receive the Holy Spirit, he has given us, that's the impartation of his grace. He has given us something we don't deserve. Now the Holy Spirit empowers us to be able to walk after it as opposed to the edicts of our flesh. So if we allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit, these things won't apply to us because the fruit of the Spirit is contrary to all of these things. That's why Paul was talking about in the early chapters about um, ordinances and, and all of these customs of men that's done away with the using. We're supposed to be a Spirit-led people. We're supposed to be a Spirit-led people governed by a Spirit. That means that we, if we allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit, then we won't do those things that are, 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 are <coughs> fruits of the flesh. We won't because we're not governed by the flesh. We'll be governed by his spirit. So let's go on. He says, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in, the, in knowledge after the image of him that created him, which is renewed in the knowledge of Jesus who was created by his father. <clears throat> Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision. He says barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free. But Christ is all in all. That in this new, with this new man, we're all on the same playing field. There's no schisms. There's no big I's and little U's. There's no uh, up there and down there. We're all on the same playing field. God, that's, that, this is the new man. Now we're talking about the kingdom of God. We're not talking about the religious stuff that goes on day to day. We're talking about the kingdom that God has established uh, through his son that we're supposed to be advancing. He said, put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Put on, therefore, those who've been called by God. You've been post personally chosen by God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. These are all attributes of the spirit forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave ye so also do ye so we got to have that type of spirit we have to have a forgiving spirit because we have been forgiven the ultimate forgiveness of our situation and above all these things put on charity which is the bond of perfection you can always see them talking about charity because that is the undergird from which all of this is to move forward. It was because of his love for us that he did all that he's done. And we have to move in the same vein of love in order to reach perfection in the spirit. So when we move forward, we have to move forward in the spirit of love. And every step that we take in God, it's got to be, it has to be undergirded by love. That's the reason why, which we're doing. We, we want to be what he wants us to be. 
and we want to do the things he would have us to do because of our love for him and if we love him we're going to love his creation what am i saying that we're going to have love for our brothers and sisters because we can't love him and not love our brothers and sisters we can't love him and not love his creation so we supposed to be an example of the love that he has put in us that love that hope that promise that love that's in us should manifest and it's going to bring forth all of these fruits of the spirit so and and when you see what christ did for us it was all an act of love and let the peace of god rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful and should nobody be more thankful than us should nobody be more grateful than us um we are bearers of hope we are we, we we are possessors of his hope and we have hope beyond the grave and, and 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 not just on this earth but we have it beyond so when we look at a situation we have to trust what his word say when we are governed by a spirit a lot of times we can come into things we don't quite understand but we have to just trust his process but all of this stuff is, is as we develop and grow in him but the time is clicking it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord this created atmosphere the worship when you create an atmosphere of worship you create an atmosphere where God can minister to you and a lot of times we think that this should be done just in church when you do a little research about Enoch when Enoch separated himself from the people and he just wanted to concentrate himself on the God all he did was pray and worship God to the point where he will only go before the people once a year this is after this is after the Lord had to tell him to go and teach the people about me the ways of the Lord and he did and when he went and taught them they made him king and and, and then he, he, he got he wind up going back into after he taught him, because it was a saying during his time that anyone want to know the ways of God, anyone wants any man that wants to know the ways of God, let him come to Enoch. So what am I saying? He it was this atmosphere of praise and worship, and we can get into that uh, praise and worship. And I'm not talking about in no church. I'm talking about it, these. This is personal, and we get into that place of praise and worship, and then he began to minister to you. And begin to speak to you in ways that you thought not. And that th develop a relationship. Because it shift the atmosphere of your thinking. It don't become about you and your life situation. But it become about him. And you being a part of his will and his purpose. So when we praise and worship in him, we honor him. We glorify him. We magnify him. Thanking him for his goodness and his grace. And his loving kindness. His thoughtfulness toward us. His mercies that are continual. How he just look out for us even when we don't think about him. And you begin to worship and praise him and magnify him for who he is. The sovereign God. Most holy king of kings. There's none like him in all that is. And we begin to worship him, hallelujah, and praise him and thank him for his goodness. And then when you begin to do that, he begins to minister to you. Because it's like opening up, the Bible says he do well in the midst of praise. So when you, you create that atmosphere where he'll come and sup with you, he'll come and minister to you, he'll begin to whisper things in your ear that pertain to his word. <clears throat> and um, you'll find yourself wanting to do it more and more and more, and you'll be wanting to steal yourself away to him. Uh, and that opportunity is for each and every one of us. So this, you know, sometimes, and I'm not speaking against the corporate gathering, but when it comes to praise and worship, we shouldn't start when we get to come together. That should be a personal thing. That should be something that we do, you know, when we by ourselves, just meditating on his goodness and singing songs and melodies in our heart, thinking about the scriptures, meditating on them. And he began to open up our understanding. And, and you'll find yourself wanting to steal away and get more and more and more. Praise God. But let me keep reading because I that's you can tell me I'm. This, I like talking about the Lord 
And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And then now we're talking about uh, wives and husbands, the duties of the wives and the husbands. And I'm going to read that, and then we're going to be not much longer. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as it is fit to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. And it says, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. And it goes on to say, Father, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. I wanted to add something to that because it's uh, something in Ephesians 2 that talks about that. Um, right here is Ephesians. 6 and 4 I believe it is it talks about it here Ephesians 6 and 4 and it says and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and this is important for fathers it's not it's, 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 we really need to, to, to seek God on how to minister to our children so that we, we would encourage them to have a, a more intimate relationship with God as opposed to running them away. And, um, you know, sometimes people don't quite um, understand uh, the, the, the significance of that. And we have a tendency because we've been corrected with the rod of correction that we think that's the way. But we want to bring correction, but we want to do it in a way that's nurturing so that, um, and I don't mean that we just, they do wrong and you just say, okay, Johnny, no, no, no. You have to find a way that's going to reach them to get the point that you're trying to get. But you first have to have a point that you're trying to get. Not just bringing correction, but you want to bring correction so that you can redirect. So you bring in correction with direction. direct. So you, you're correcting the direction of the child. So it's, it's purposeful. So it's not just you correcting them. You, you know, I need to write a book about that. But anyway, and then it goes on to say, servants. Obeying all things, your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Now, this could be applicable in today, the, just changing the terminology. But when we do things as kingdom citizens, we have to do it as unto the Lord. So if you're on a job, you need to, if, if it requires us uh, uh if it requires you to do thus and thus then you need to do that and not do like everybody else and take you know instead of doing taking they said use three screws and one nail and everybody else said man all you gotta do is use uh two screws and a nail nobody never know and you do it we have to be in compliance because we got to realize that we represent god and his kingdom so everything that we do is a d direct representation of the kingdom and I want to say this as a disclaimer. I'm not saying that I've done everything right. You know, if anybody does some stuff wrong, I'm just being 100. But you can't stay there. Cannot stay there. You cannot stay there. We got to get up and keep it moving. We have to redirect our lives so that it'll be in line with what God said. So when we find that we're wrong, we got to bring correction, uh, allow correction to, 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 to take place in our lives so that our direction can be um, redirected in the direction we're supposed to be going. So with that being in mind, so we don't think, because the enemy will make people think that, yeah, that brother is so-and-so and so-and-so. So I know he always talking behind the scenes. So I'm trying to share this conversation down right now. So he'll say, yeah, that brother, uh, he, he probably this or that. No. He made just as many mistakes as you and probably more. But the thing is that you don't stay there. Good, better, best. You hear me say it all the time. It has a meaning. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until my good is better and my better is best. I want to maximize the potential that is in me advancing God's kingdom. So that means that I'm not going to stay there. So I'm looking for perfection. When you aim at a target, you don't aim you don't aim near the target. You don't aim around the target. You you aim at the center of the target, 
at the center. I'm going to touch my nose at the center of the target. You aim at the center of the target. Now, when you release the projectile and you find it hit the target, if it's off, you redirect your aim. But your aim is always to be at the center. So we should be aiming for perfection in God. We should be aiming to be all he said we can be and not focus on what, well, he has made provisions for us to fall. No, because if I aim with thinking like that, then I'm just going to point toward the target. Cause, so now my desire or, or my, my desire for perfection has been lessened because I feel like, well, I don't have to. God is going to judge our heart. And we cannot give him 99%. We can't. Cain and Abel. We have to give him our best. Give him our best coming out the gate. So when we do that, we have to think with that mindset. Not allow the, 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 the religious stuff of the day to cause us to sit back on our chair of comfortability. No, baby, we need to be trying to make 100 for real, every time, every time, every time, and you might hit it here and hit 93 and then hit 96 and hit 91 and then you hit 100 and you, okay, I got it now, I'm going to keep it right here, keep it right here, and you aim again and you hit 100 and hit 100, then you hit 96, but my point is that you're aiming for perfection in him, to be mature in him so that you can exemplify that of Christ. And we know that perfection is meaning mature. But if we're mature in him and if we're allowing ourselves to be led by his spirit, and we, we, the Bible said we won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. And if we're in that vein, then we're going to walk in the spirit of perfection. And you don't hear people talk like that. Because that means that we can't do what we want to do. We can't say what we want to say. No, we got to do it God's way. And if it ain't his way, then it's our way. And our way don't mean nothing. So we need to give it his, give it, the scripture always talk about the men of God. Said they, they neither turn to the left nor to the right. But they stayed the course. And we have to stay the course. We have to stay the course. So, anyway, let me finish reading. It says, And, whoso, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as, unto the, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord ye shall knowing knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for <clears throat> for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive the wrong which he done. And there is no respect of person. So don't think that you're going to get away. But we want to be able to do things the way God would have us to do them so we can get the results that he has tended for us to have. You know. Uh, so, praise God. I, I'm going to close with that. But we have to desire to want to be perfected in him. You know, I I sometimes, you know, I don't know. I you know, sometimes even in this, you know, I'd be wondering sometimes to myself, yeah, you know, I have to, I, I have to sometimes encourage myself cuz you be wondering is 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 is, is and you, are you really reaching somebody or whatever, but if I've done what I felt led to do, uh, praise the Lord, Sister Smith. If I've done what I felt led to do, then I feel that I've done what God told me to do. Now, whether the outcome be this or this, that's up to him. But I need to do what he wants me to do, as do we all. We need to say what it is he would have us to say. Um, because at the end, it's his will and not that of our own. So I don't want it because you can get caught up on numbers and it can take you to the left or to the right. Because uh, first thing people will start telling you is that, yeah, um, uh, yeah, you, you need to do this and say more of that. And then you're not saying what God told you to say. And I don't want to be guilty of that. So with that being said, I'm going I'm to um, kind of begin to shut it down here. I'm going to just um, do the Ezekiel 33, 6 and 7. And I said it was March. And now, you know, I, and I'm going to say this. When he gave me this scripture, he gave me this scripture, and, and I saw it in a dream. So when I read that scripture, 
I read that scripture and that's all that I read in that chapter. And then the other day, it was on my mind to read that chapter. And I read several chapters in uh, Ezekiel that's pertaining to that. And it was so profound to me because that's the day in which we are today. And I didn't realize the magnitude of it. And I'm just being honest and, um, until I read the entirety. And what I'm saying is, is that when God gave it to me, I just said what he told me to say. But he had prompted me to, to go over it in its entirety. And it was warning after warning after warning. And here it is now, today. We don't have a lot of time for the Lord come. So we need to be kind of um, sure in our mind up. Uh, well, thank you, Auntie. <laughs> we need to be sure in our mind up. And we need to be making sure that we are in line with what he's saying. Because he's coming back for a people that's making himself, making their selves ready for his return. They Look, the wise virgin was waiting for the bridegroom. The foolish started off waiting, but they slumber and slept. But the wise one was waiting. It was waiting. They was looking for him. They was looking for him. We have to look at that parable. Just look at it. Because God always make it simple. And a lot of times it's so simple till it be hid. The truth is right in front of us, but we don't see it. And he have to open up our eyes to see it. So they was waiting. They were waiting. And they were looking for him. We need to be like that. We need to be like, we need to have the lamp of our life trim. We need to be allowing the Spirit of God to lead us continuously. So that we, as the children of light, because we're looking at the light, but when you look at the parable, one, the possessors of the light, and then those who light had dimmed, we need to stay in the light of God's will. We need to stay in the light of His way. We need to keep our eyes toward him so that we can proclamate his truth. Now, we're not to be where we're just in a corner just looking for him and not. We have to occupy till he come. Amen. Trimmed and burning. That's, that's right. And so we need to occupy till he come so that we, we can be all that he wants us to be. Because uh, he, we, I just, I don't know. Sometimes I'll be driving. I don't know if anybody think like me. But sometimes I'll be driving, I'll be asking myself, is this it? I mean, if, if I'm about to go through this car, because I dreamt it. I dreamt I was driving. Bam, I went straight through the car and was caught up in the heavens. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I really believe that in this lifetime that something like that's going to happen. And, and the whole dream was, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to go. I don't know if I ever shared the dream. But I had a dream. It was like in the desert and I was just driving, just driving, and just going as fast as I can go down the desert. I was right in the middle of the desert just driving. There wasn't no road. It was just, I was just driving in the desert. Then when I looked over, I looked over to the, that probably would have been to the east of me in the dream. And then I seen a, a like one of those buildings in the Middle East explode. And when I saw that, I turned right. As soon as I turned right, I saw a legion of angels. They were standing tall as buildings. And they had armament that was like polished mirrors of chrome it was it just reflect all you can see is the reflection of everything around them on it and they had dome shaped hit helmets with with swords and they all had their head down and they was just standing in one whole legion of them and then when I saw them and then I looked up to my on top of the mountain to the um when I made the right turn I looked to the top of the mountain to the left it was another legion just waiting Shortly after that, man, I went straight through the through the window, and I was in the heavens. And the stuff that I saw, I don't even know. I can't. It's kind of weird. You, I, I know what I saw, but I can't. It won't come out of my mouth. I, I know what I saw, but I can't utter it. So I understand what Paul was saying, but you, I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. So I, I just really believe we don't have no lot of time. I just, I'm convinced of that. And I don't want to get caught short. But anyway, he says here, Ezekiel 33, 6 and 7. He said, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require the watchman hand. So thou, o son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, 
and warn them for me. This is a clarion call to leaders that they need to say what God is saying to his people because time is winding down. And this is another thing. You haven't heard me say this, and I'm not trying to speak doom on nobody. Um, but but this is in I really feel this in my spirit that we are begin this we are going to begin to see judgment on some of these leaders that's not doing right. And my prayer is that before that come, because up until that hour, they can repent and God can change it. And I pray that that happen. I pray that that happen. I don't want to see that. But it's important for us to understand that he is a just God. Um, Noah and also Methuselah for 120 years, they warned the people that judgment was coming to repent and they didn't pay them no attention. So our job is to be that light in the midst of darkness and let them know that he's coming for people and he has made provision for those who desire to leave the kingdom of darkness and come to light and realize that all of this has been made possible through his son, um, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And there's no other way that we can get to God but through him. And if we come any other way, we're a thief and a robber. So we have to come the way that God has provided for mankind. And our job is to tell the world that <clears throat> as we demonstrate this life of holiness and love, so that we will be the children of light. So that they'll see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. Well, that's it for me. As I always say in closing, <clears throat> good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is blessed. I'm co uh, closing the word of prayer. And um, I'm, like I said, I have a, a friend. His name is Derek, Derek Rose. He lost his son. And I want to pray for him. His son was a young man. 20, I think it's 28. And uh, I'm just going to pray um, that the Lord bless his family and bless him as he go through this troubled time, this hard time. Because parents never think of that. Never. Ugh, I'm just, anyway, let's let's pray for him. Gracious Father God, we pray that you bless him. And if, bless Brother Derek and his household, Lord God. Allow your peace that surpass all, this, all understanding to be upon him, Lord God. Lord, and comfort him with the comfort of your love. Lord God, because you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us, and we ask that you bless him. Only you know, Lord God, how he's feeling, and you know the words of comfort to speak to his heart. Lord, and we pray that you just allow your angels to minister to him continuously. Father God, bless each and every one of us, Lord God, as we go throughout this week, Lord, that we'll be used for your glory, Lord God. Give us a desire, Lord God, of expectancy, Lord God, to be used by you. Lord, bless us to think out the compassion of ourselves and allow your spirit to have its way in our hearts and our minds, that you might use us mightily <clears throat> as we advance your kingdom, Lord, that we might see ourselves as you see us, that we might become all that you purpose us to be, that we'll take off the, the mantle of religiosity, Lord God, as, as, as deeming ourselves, uh, minimizing ourselves in your kingdom. For you have made us to become kings and queens in your kingdom so that we might walk as this royal priesthood, this holy nation, proclamating the truth to the world, Lord God, as we walk in holiness before you. Have your way in our hearts and minds and bless each and every one of us. Bless our loved ones and all those we're connected to, Lord God. Let the light of our life, Lord, shine upon them, Lord God, that they might turn to you and seek your face. Father, we ask you to have your way and we'll glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So like I said, good, better, best. Okay, Legion is normally three to six thousand. Okay, yeah. It was it was a it was a Legion. It was they was they was compacted together. And it was like I never seen nothing like that. And they stood as tall as buildings. I mean man, but they wow. And uh wow. It was I ain't never seen nothing like that. But uh I really think I was driving and I went right through the window. It didn't break. I just went through it. And I was up in the heavens. Just like that. Man. And um, man. I, 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 I really think that we close. I really think we close. And you know. Don't want to miss it. Well. With that being said. I bid everybody a good night. I pray that the Lord continue to bless and watch over. And thank you for uh, sharing uh, your, your Tuesday uh, evening with me. I appreciate it. And it's an encouragement to me 
and I thank God for each and every one of y'all. Um, I really do. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. All right. God bless you all. Thank you and good night.